Hello, everyone. Hey, it's great to see you guys. Uh, let's see, where's everybody coming in from? Hey, you guys are already talking about our subject tonight. Thank you. Uh, you're right. Sarah said, I'm sure this is going to be great because they know I love ICD-10. Obviously, Sarah has watched me present ICD-10 for a while. It's kind of obvious how excited I get. And Kimberly, yep, you're excited to hear what I say. Well, we're going to have fun tonight. I was just telling Jesus a moment ago that this was going to, he always says, you know, have fun. And I was like, oh, I will tonight because uh, it's a subject I enjoy. We are going to uh, talk about the process of elimination and ICD-10. Now, this is going to work both if you're getting ready to test and uh, across the board, any credential that uses ICD-10, you're going to be able to use a few little tips that I'm going to give you. But just in your daily work, too, as a coder, this is stuff that as you get under your belt, uh, makes you faster and more accurate. And, and don't think that you ever get away from looking up codes. Uh, sometimes I amaze myself and I think... Oh, I remember that code. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and uh, especially chronic conditions because I deal with them a lot. But if you start asking me things like uh, what is, you know, uh, bilateral ultitis media, I can't tell you that. Now, I could, you know, I, I could tell you it's an H code, but I, I can't tell you what that is because I don't work in pediatrics. Most of my uh, dealings every day is chronic conditions with risk adjustment. So, uh, and, and of course, HHS risk adjustment, predominantly I do CMS. So uh, anything that happens to you when you get old, I'm there. Um, is this reviewed in depth with the CRC course? Sarah, we do deal a lot of this in the CRC course because, um, well, first of all, because that's part of my background. So anything that I can steer to educate in that venue, I will. <laughs> and and exactly, this will happen a lot with uh with the CRC because these are chronic conditions usually that you deal with all the time. But but this isn't just for risk adjustment. We're uh, talking about all of the chronic, not all the chronic, all of the diagnoses that you could be tested on. We're going to, again, give you a few little ideas on ways to narrow down with the process of elimination and um, just just some tips. Uh, this is a CCO live event, so you're always going to be able to come back and reference this in YouTube and uh, more casual, right? So feel free to make comments. I'll keep this eye looking at the this other screen, my other monitor, and uh, try to address any questions that you have along the way. Let's get started. Process of elimination for ICD-10. The first thing that you need to know, and I, I apologize for this being a little bit smaller. However, I wanted to get everything on one screen. The first step when dealing with ICD-10 is know the first character. So if you don't get anything else out of tonight, you need to memorize the first character. Now, I don't mean memorize every single code. Uh, however, it follows the alphabet, guys. You know the alphabet, so you're not going to have any trouble memorizing these. And let's, uh, I've done this before with other videos. Let's just real quickly highlight how to do this. If a code in ICD-10 starts with an A or B, then don't think certain infectious and parasitic diseases. That's too much. You don't have to memorize this. Know that it's going to be some type of a bug. A bug, A, B. That's how I remember it. It's either going to be uh, a, a parasite. That's a bug. Uh, and again, it's going to be something in there that isn't supposed to be there. A virus, an infection. Those are A and B codes. So you don't have to use my suggestion to get through these. You can come up with whatever works and resonates with your little gray cells. Neoplasms, they're all C and D codes. Now, there are some other D codes but, uh, that are uh, diseases of the blood. But for the most part, think C and D have to do with cancers. Uh, 
And another little tip, because it's alphanumeric, think of how the neoplasm table is set up. It is set up to uh, go through the body system. However, it is set up with the table so that primary malignancies is first, then secondary, right? And then it goes, then, then um, uh, let's see, uh, primary, secondary, but not or cancer in situ, benign, uh, uncertain, all this other stuff. I can't remember the last three, but anyway, if it is a low number like C0 something, that's a primary cancer. By the time you get to D49, those are unspecified type cancers or benign cancers. Okay, so it's alpha numeric in that way. So if you have a choice and you see two codes that are cancer codes and you have one cancer, you can almost weed them out very quickly by looking at the numeric aspect of it. It'll If it starts with a C and the number is higher, then it's probably a secondary cancer or a cancer in situ versus a lower number will be um, the code for a primary cancer. Now, do not do this for testing purposes. Always look up the code. But if you need to look at the options, and we've got some examples here, to kind of decide, hmm, you know, is this going to be a, uh, this is a secondary cancer uh, and I've only, you know, and I've, uh, this was a real hard question. I saved it to the last. I'm going to go back. I got to pick something. If it's a secondary pec cancer and there's two codes, pick the higher number. <laughs> I mean, that's going to probably be right. Uh, diseases of the blood. And uh, those are going to be later D codes. Now it only goes to D89. So uh, anything from D50. Remember, uh, that's another thing. D, halfway to 100, from D50 all the way out to the rest of the D codes are going to be blood codes. Uh, 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 polycytopenia, or thrombocytopenia, and things like that. E, endocrine codes. Predominantly, you're going to be tested on things regarding diabetes, but anything that has to do with the endocrine system starts with an E. Uh, when you look at F codes, they're codes that make you feel funny, kind of, you know, funny farmy type thing. Uh, nervous system is G codes. There's two things you can remember either uh, Hercules Perot from Agatha Christie, though, always said little gray cells, and that's actually what you call them. They're gray cells in your brain or ganglia, part of your brain. Um, then H codes are eyes and ears, hearing. Uh, then um, let's see. Then you get into circulatory system. Anything to have with ischemia or the heart. Think eye, heart, right? Uh, J codes, I always tell everybody about breathing, the little, uh, um, when you work on an ambulance, if you need to make sure the airways patent, the person's unconscious, they have this little device that looks like a J and you stick it in their mouth and you turn it sideways. You'd measure it from the corner of their mouth to their ear. I always remember that. But one person told me, a student one time told me, he said, well, it looks like a fish hook and a fish can't breathe out of water. So they're breathing. Right. I thought oh, that was really good. K codes, digestive system, special K cereal, uh, L, everything to do with the skin. If you want your skin to be luscious, then you're going to use an L code. M code, musculoskeletal system, uh, M's. N, anything with a gento urinary system. Uh, gosh, how do we remember? Uh, no. Do you have to go to the bathroom? No. Uh, let's see. O for obstetrics. P for pediatrics. Q, if you were born a little quirky, because they're congenital codes, uh, R codes are signs and symptoms. S codes will be where you, you they'll be like broken bone codes, uh, S and T's, uh, injuries and stuff. External causes of, of morbidity, V and Y. Z codes, everything else. Everything that tells the rest of the story. 
Uh, these are history of codes, um, status codes. Uh, I got ran over by a tractor in a parade codes, just weird things. And then, of course, they added those U codes for codes for special purposes. If they give you a U code, it's probably COVID. At least that's what they're testing you on. And uh, Sarah says, I hope you come up with these analogies for ICD-11. Of course I will, because this is the only way I can make my head memorize it. And they are not that hard. It will not be the same. So you're going to memorize this. And then when we switch over to 11, we're going to learn a new code set. But it's predominantly the same thing. Uh, get in there and start practicing with it. I have already started uh, working with ICD-11, it's going to be fun, but don't get me off on a tangent. Now, the next thing you need to remember when dealing with um, ICD and ruling out process of elimination is you have to remember that it follows the disease process. Now, what is my mantra that I tell everybody all the time? Why do we code? And I bet you guys could probably type it out in the chat. How many of you guys remember what I say all the time? I'll give you a few minutes to type it out while I tell you why it's important to know causal relationships. It's built into the code set. And some codes are going to change due to the diagnosis having a causal relationship with another one. These are the heavy hitters, diabetes, hypertension, CKD, and CHF. Now there's others. There are other ones, but these are the ones that you're going to be tested on and that you're going to see daily that have combo codes and, and causal relationships that's going to change the code. Yes, that's right. Statistical purpose happens to be a great way of reimbursement. You're right. That's not exactly the way I say it, but that is the gist. We code for statistical purposes. It happens to be a convenient way to get paid. So therefore, we're translating the documentation of the provider into another language, a code set, so that we can capture it, capture the statistics. That's why there's causal relationships built in to the code set. The disease process, it's necessary for the disease process to be described. And again, if a patient has diabetes and they have a comorbidity within the diabetes, we know because of statistics what organ systems are mostly affected by diabetes. And it's going to be the kidneys, the eyes, the, um, I'm going down because kidneys is a two. It's, you know, like E112. Uh, the eyes is three. Uh, four is neurological. Five is the heart, six is the skin and everything else, and nine is no comorbidities. That's another thing you should memorize, guys, and we've done that on another um, presentation just recently. So go in and write E11.2 renal kidneys because you got two kidneys, E11.3 three, you got two eyes. And if you're a parent, you have an eye in the back of your head or think, you know, people have a third eye. Three is always eye uh, uh, complications. Four, you got four extremities. Neurological is four. Uh, and it usually is things like polyneuropathy. Four extremities uh, is, is neuro. neuro. Five is going to be the heart. Now, um, how did someone say that the other day? And I thought, oh, you're so smart. I had not thought about that in five. Now I can't remember what it was. Um, and then six is skin and everything else, right? So make yourself a note uh, for that so that you can, um, you'll be able to look at diabetic codes really quickly. Hypertension and CKD changes the C the hypertension code. We have different codes for hypertension. We have I10. Remember, 0 is I10 is the first code most people learn and it's kind of a no-brainer. We work in ICD-10, hypertension, everybody has it, I10. But if the person has hypertensive heart disease, that's I11, 
not I10. And if a person has a kidney complication, two diseases, it's a two. I12 because the heart's involved and the kidneys are involved too. If you have three uh, things going on, three disease processes, you have uh, hypertensive heart, you have CKD, and you got CHF, heart failure, I13. Huh, see how easy that is? Now, Oh, hand over your heart, five fingers. Ah, Natasha, you remembered. It was it may have even been you that said that. That's right. I knew there was a great way. You put your five fingers over your heart, and um, that's how you can remember that five is the heart. You guys are savvy. Again, study up on these codes, the codes surrounding diabetes, hypertension, CKD, and CHF, because they do do change with the disease process. CKD, pretty darn easy because the stage follows the last character. If you're a stage one, it's point one. In one eight, point one. If you're stage two, point two, three, three, point three, point four, point five, point six. Um, it doesn't go up past six. It, well, it has unspecified would be a nine. Uh, and then CHF, I50.9 means you have CHF, but you don't have any other information. And there's a place for that because if you were newly diagnosed with CHF, they need to send you off to the cardiologist or get an, you know, ejection fraction study. They need to do so, an echo. They got to do other things to find out what type of CHF you have. And the type is determined on what side of the heart is being affected. Is it the left side or the right side of the heart? And that can will tell you if you have systolic or diastolic. And if it's both sides of the heart, it's diastolic and systolic, diastolic on systolic, or is it systolic on diastolic? It doesn't really matter. It's because you got both of them. Okay. Now that is a really interesting side rail that I won't get on, but I did get to listen to a fabulous cardiologist in Fort Worth the other day at uh, one of the local chapter conferences. And I reached out to him and we're going to get him as a guest speaker because he had some great analogies and things to tell you about, especially CHF. And I was writing notes just as fast as I could. And then I thought, oh, we'll just get him to speak for us. And then we'll have it on the record. It was really, really good and very, very funny. All right, let's talk about practice. Let's put these few things that I've already told you into practice. And I'm going to give you some suggestions, but what I want you to do is use this thought process, however it's going to resonate with you, and then you're going to use it for yourself. So you're going to, you're going to understand how to translate this language. There's one thing that you, you do, you learn how to look up the code and translate, okay? That's, that's what happens in the beginning. And that would be as if, you know, you took four years of high school Spanish and, you know, you could read a, a book in Spanish. You can even write a letter in Spanish and stuff, but you're really not fluent. But you, you could get by very, very well, right? All right. But after you get a little time under your belt and you really study the code set and the stuff falls into place, that's when you get fluent. Oh, my gosh, I like the way that sounded. I am going to tell people from now on, I am fluent in ICD-10 because I think in ICD-10 now. It's just a, such a fun code set. All right, let's do our first practice. Patients, BMI is still not at goal, moderate malnutrition, and cachexia noted. With that being said, nobody's looking up any codes at this point. What do you see in front of you? You see four choices. Now, if you know that um, uh, the patient has malnutrition, then are you thinking that's an E code or would that be an R code, right? R codes, what did I say? They're signs and symptom codes. But malnutrition, it's actually a definitive diagnosis. So just out of curiosity, let's say this is A, B, C, and D. If you didn't, don't, don't be looking these up. 
if you just had a gut feeling on what you see here, which one of these would you suspect is the correct answer? A, B, C, or D. And maybe I should have used A, B, C, or D, but I just did the bullets instead. I'm really curious what your thought process is. And then I'm going to tell you how my brain works if I didn't have these codes memorized, but I just happened to have them memorized. So kudos to me. Uh, okay, C. Lots of people saying C. Very good. Okay. Hmm. Now, if you're going to break down process of elimination, the first thing we have to do, Kimberly says D, um, is know a few things about the code. Who knows what BMI codes are? They're Z codes. Oh, we got an A in there. Man, I'm, I'm enjoying that you guys are getting really... I'm really glad because you guys are going with your gut. Okay, we have everything covered. Nobody said B. That's okay because they know that it's more than one code, right? Right. So again, this statement tells us that there's probably more than one code because the person has moderate malnutrition and cachexia. How many of you even know what cachexia is? Do you even know? Is cachexia a sign or symptom of malnutrition? If it is, then it wouldn't get coded. Eh, maybe. Okay. What if I tell you, uh, okay, uh, what if I told you that um, you, okay, the BMI is, BMIs are Z codes. They're Z68 codes. And just a little sideline, if you have a BMI of 40 and above, that would be morbid obesity and that risk adjusts but we're not doing risk adjustment. We just need to code out what's stated here. And the, the, the first thing that you know, if you knew that a BMI code was a Z68 code, you would probably latch onto that right away and think, okay, well, it states the patient has a BMI. So it's gotta be A or C or D. But the problem here, guys, is what is the BMI? BMI, BMI is not a diagnosis. B is my is something that you have. So Z68.1 is a BMI of 19. And there's a code range there, but it's around 19. But you have to have a BMI stated, the number, to be able to code it. And since we don't have a number, we cannot, we cannot code Z68.1 because there's no BMI listed. Therefore, a and D are knocked out. Now, if they said the patient's BMI was 19 and not at goal, you've got a BMI, the number, because that, that character after the decimal indicates what the BMI is. Now, it's not one, two, three. It's, it's, it's a weird number. But I'm telling you that we don't have a BMI. We just know the patient's BMI was not at goal. So A and D is automatically out. We don't have that information. Okay, malnutrition and cachexia. You don't know what cachexia is, so you got to wait on that. And you have malnutrition. Another tip, when you see uh, descriptive verbiage like mild, moderate, and severe, I guarantee you it's going to be a level in a code, right? Uh, morbid obesity. Uh, severe obesity, uh, just obesity by itself. You know that that's two different that's two different codes. So you'll have mild, moderate, and severe a lot in descriptive words in the code set, and that changes the code. That being said, E46 is going to be. You know, you'd think, okay, well, our E code is our our malnutrition, but we have moderate malnutrition. A giveaway is if you don't have a decimal, then you can't describe mild, moderate, or severe because it's not, it, all those descriptive terms is after the decimal, usually, like 98.72% of the time in the code set. So the fact that E46 doesn't have descriptions you know, anything after the decimal, I would have tossed that out in my brain if I was quicking, 
quickly thinking. And actually, E46 is the code for, um, um, it, it is um, malnutrition unspecified, I, I believe. I can't remember exactly. It's something like that. Uh, so I know my code is probably going to be 0 0.1 or 0 0.0, and E44 is uh, going to be malnutrition. So uh, I, I already ruled out A, though, because Z68.1, I can't use that. So that whole thing is out. So I know E44 is going to be malnutrition. I still haven't looked up a code. So is it zero or is it a one? Now, are we going to do just one code? Mm. Whenever you see moderate, or whenever you see a, a, a diagnosis that you don't know is a sign or symptom, that tells you that you don't understand the disease process enough. And that's not a good thing. Cachexia is uh, something that a person gets when their body is wasting away. It actually is like the body starts eating the muscle and they'll get this concave look by their eyes, the sunken cheeks. They can see it in the armpit and different places. It is a wasting um, part of um uh, but it's more than that because a person that is obese can still have malnutrition. And a person that is obese, can a person that's obese have cachexia? I know they can have malnutrition. I don't know if they can have cachexia or not. Anyway, it's a wasting away. Um, let's see. Jane says, uh, okay, a question. Doc documents assessment BMI elevated. I think Doc says that something that would not, would not want to say obesity. I do not look for BMI if on record. Yeah, well, that's just wrong. Don't get me on that tangent, Jane. The, the reason they don't want to say obesity is because they have to give the patient that document, their uh, assessment when they walk out, and they get upset. No, Nobody wants to be called obese, let alone morbidly obese. However, uh, you could put the BMI on there, but if they don't diagnose morbid obesity or obesity, it doesn't get captured for the RAF score, nor does it captured for the statistics. So again, we don't want to do just BMI alone. So code without decimal is the base code and after decimal is the description makes complete sense. You're right, Kimberly. Now that is not true 100% of the time. Okay. But for the most part, if you're having to rule out and look at questions and processes of um, elimination, that's going to do it. The last character is also going to be um, uh, giveaways. And while I'm on that, I want you guys to write this down because I just thought of this and I did not put it in the in, in this slide deck. If it's an eight, so anything point eight or eight at the end of the code, that usually means other. And other is defined by the code set is the provider defined it. There is a description there. However, there isn't a code for it yet. So that's what other is. And then if it's a nine, that usually means unspecified, meaning the doctor doesn't know yet. They still have to do more testing. And then once the testing's done, then they can come back and define it. And if there is no code to define what they've stated it is, then you would use an eight, right? Now, Again, this is not 100% of the time in the code set, but I would say it's, you know, more than 90% of the time. Uh, there are a lot of codes that don't do that, but that is another, uh, that's another tip that I should have put in this slide deck. I, I can't believe I forgot to tell you that, but I'm telling you now, eights and nines, define them. Those are quick giveaways. All right. If we don't know if it's a 0.1 or a 0 0.0 for the malnutrition, the fact that it's moderate, it's oh, it ends up usually being mild, moderate, and severe, uh, <clears throat> then we know that there's going to be two codes because cachexia is not, it, it is another diagnosis. And the fact that they say, you know, malnutrition and cachexia, that kind of helps you there. So, I would pick um, C in this. And actually, 
I would be right. But you can't use, you can't think mild is, is a zero, one is moderate, and two is severe, or how, however, you can't, you can't do that. Because sometimes it's not, it goes the other way. And actually with malnutrition, it does. The higher number ends up being uh, mild and moderate. And then severe is the lower lower number. It's just really weird. But it goes backwards. Uh, usually it doesn't do that. All right. So now we know without having looked up a single code, which one we would go with if we were in a hurry or if we wanted to weed out. So what are we going to do when we do kind of narrow this down really quickly? We know that the first thing I need to look up is E44.0 and 1. It's not going to take you very long. And um, you know that cachexia is an R code because cachexia is a sign and symptom, but um, it, it does have its own. Um, it isn't one of those things that you don't code if it's a sign and symptom of malnutrition. It does get coded. All right, let's move to the next one. I think I've worked that one to death. Here is a fun one. This is one that I give advanced students to see if they've got it, if they can figure it out. So we have a new diagnosis of PVD, skin ulcer on left elbow, and hyperlipidemia complicating diabetes. What is the first code that you're going to look at to rule out? I'm really curious what you guys think. Just give this the old hairy coding eyeball or what are your little coding spidey senses telling you? Um, if you had to pick A, B, C, or D, which one leaps out at you uh, first? And I'm just going to take a little sip of drink of my um, uh, mango juice while, while you know, I'm going to keep my eye on there. Come on, guys. Look at that really quickly. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't be looking up codes. Just guess which one would you think it is quickly. Because if you wait too long, that tells me you're looking it up. Okay, C to remove. Okay. Uh, the first or the last is the one. Now, wait, wait. Which, okay, you're saying that the answer, every, most everybody's going with C. Jane, are you saying the first or the last that you think it's the first or the last one? Okay. If you see, there is no D. D, Lisa. Oh, no, I th I'm sorry, E. <laughs> I looked at that wrong. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. A, B, C, D. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. You guys did a good job. All right. The first thing that's going to allow you to rule out um, any one of these is Whenever a person has any type of skin condition, ulcer or whatever, you always have to stage it. No matter what, all ulcers have to be staged. So what are um, skin codes? L, we want luscious longevity in our skin, no wrinkles, L codes. So this has to have an L code. Whichever one of those does not have an L code listed gets tossed. That's D. D is tossed. There is no L code. And we have an ulcer on the left elbow. And it doesn't matter if you got a combo code or, or, or anything. You have to have an L code. It's a guideline, excuse me, to stage all ulcers. So um, we know that the last one's out. D's out. Just draw a line through it. Next, how can you rule out another one of these, right? We toss out D. The next one we're going to toss out is, uh, Kimberly says, toss out B. Why are we tossing out B, Kimberly? I'm curious as to what your thinking is. Tell me why you toss out B. Because I was going to go with another code uh, to rule out first. No, B is good, Jane said. Okay. All right. 
I would toss out A. Just got in going to listen only. <laughs> okay. Why are you tossing A? Mixed hyperlipidemia. All right. Uh, the That's a really good one. Okay. The next thing I would look at is your diabetic codes. E11.9 means the patient has no diabetic com complications. Does this person have a diabetic complication? Is there any causal relationships within this uh, description? There is. They're all over the place. So, um, first of all, you have to know what PVD is. It's peripheral vascular disease. And whenever you have a diabetic with a skin condition, you got to code that. So we're going to be coding for, uh, there, there's complications here. Anytime a diabetic has an ulcer, boom, it's not going to be an E11.9. So any one of these choices that's E11.9, toss. That's a dead giveaway. They will do that in testing a lot. They will also put E11.9 with other diabetic codes, toss it. Absolutely not. You can't do that. You can't say, oh, my patient has no complications to their diabetes, but they have a skin ulcer. And so now I'm going to code the diabetic with a skin ulcer code. No, you can't do that. Okay. Diabetes and PVD. That's right. There's a complication. That is, there's a code for that. So now we've tossed a out and we've tossed D out. We're left with uh, B and C. Now, someone nailed the next code that I would have looked at uh, to rule this out is the um, hyperlipidemia code. E78 is hyperlipidemia, but the after the decimal describes what type of hyperlipidemia. And they said mixed hyperlipidemia. So I just happen to know that mixed hyperlipidemia is E78.2. I think hyperlipidemia unspecified is five. I think. Let me just double check that. I don't want to make a liar out of myself. I just happen to have the encoder open over here. Now that I'm getting tired, I don't want to say that. Let's see, E78.2. Yes, mixed hyperlipidemia is a two. Five is unspecified. Hold on, I'll show you here real quick. Just bring it over. Looky there. Mixed hyperlipidemia is a two. Uh, and uh, hyperlipidemia unspecified is a five. You might want to memorize that because you see a whole lot of hyperlipidemia in, um, in your daily coding. All right. So what type of hyperlipidemia does this patient have? We don't know. So it's unspecified. So it can't be E78.2. That would be incorrect. So we just ruled out a, B, and D. Now, you may feel a little bit panicked. Will you have this available after the live lesson? Yes, Maria, this is going to stay up on YouTube. So share with all of your friends. <laughs> and Gloria makes another point. I-73.9 gets tossed. You know why it gets tossed? Because you're, uh, the diabetic code takes care of it. When a patient has um, diabetes and PVD, that is angiopathy, then you would use the diabetic um, with angiopathy. And it doesn't tell you to also code PVD because you only code an additional code to further describe what the, the diabetic complication is. And that would be saying, Oh, my patient has um, uh, diabetic PVD or angiopathy, and by the way, they have PVD also. So my my patient has uh, PVD uh, complicating their diabetes. Oh, and they have PVD also. No, you don't do that. Now, if your patient has CKD, 
Does, oh, my patient is diabetic. They have CKD. Oh, if they have CKD, CKD, I need to know what stage it is. Oh, okay. Then I'll do a CKD stage code. Same thing with a patient that has an ulcer and they're a diabetic. My patient has a diabetic foot ulcer. Oh, they do? Okay. Well, then you got to tell me where the ulcer is and what stage it is. Oh, okay. Well, that would be an L code. See what I mean? So very good. Um, and let's just real quickly, let me run through what these codes are. When you see E11.622, 6 is skin conditions and everything else. So 622 is the diabetic skin ulcer. Then E11.69 is uh, interesting because they stated hyperlipidemia complicating diabetes. That's not a causal relationship. And so it would be E11 type 2 diabetes with other complication. What's the other complication? Hyperlipidemia 9. E11.69 takes care of that. Then, um, so what is the other complication? Because other is something else. Oh, it's it's hyperlipidemia, but I don't know what type. So it's E7, 8.5. So now you've described that. Oh, there's your L code. I got to explain the stage of the ulcer. And you look at that and you say, well, what's E11.51? That's the PVD, diabetic with PVD or angiopathy. All right. Yeah. We did it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Wait, I got to use my my cursor. All right, now we got a, another one, diabetic code. Give this one the old spidey senses. What do you see, guys? What do you see? What is the first code that you're going to look at that's going to allow you to rule out? There's a whole bunch that I could rule out just by eyeballing this. Does anybody, come on, real quickly, guys, tell me what you're thinking. Don't overthink it. Don't go look it up in the book. Just let your gut tell you what's the first thing you're going to look at. Stages of CKD. Excellent. You're right. That's for insulin use. Absolutely. The I-10 code. Yes. You guys got it. Type 2 DM is E11. You're right. See? Okay. So let's start at the end. I often look at the end of the list that they give you because this is really, really common. This is a this would be a classic test question. In fact, they would probably word it up a little bit more, but it's not uncommon for them to give you five, six codes that you have to, do, to go through, okay? And that's going to make you sweat a little bit when you open up that test booklet and you, oh my gosh, you know, the very first question, I got to look up all these codes. No, you don't. You narrow it down. I have a patient that's a diabetic. They're type 2, and so they're on insulin. I have to say their long-term insulin use, that's Z7 9.4. You might as well just keep that under your belt. Memorize that. You're going to see it a lot. So since I know that's a Z code, there's no other Z codes. You don't even have to have it memorized, Z7 9.4. I know it's a Z code, and I have to have a Z code because it's insulin use. And so that means I can automatically knock out A and D because there's only two choices that have um, type 2 or uh, have insulin. So now we know it's B or C. See how quickly I knocked out those codes and we haven't looked at any of them yet. Now, the very next step, what are you thinking, right? We know it's either B or C. We have a type 2 diabetic. What do we know? about diabetic diabetes. How do we code it? Yeah, that's right, Deborah. It's B because type 2 diabetes is E11. Type 1 diabetes is E10. So we don't have to look anything else up. We automatically know it has to be B. We don't have a choice because they're on insulin and they're a type 2 diabetic. Okay, now let's break down why B is the correct answer. The first thing, they, we know it can't be E11.9 because they have CKD and CHF, and those are causal relationships, so it can't be E11.9. E11 they have complications. and um, But if a person has diabetes and CKD, that's a two. They have two kidneys. So 
it'll be a 0.22. Now it could be, there's only like three diabetes codes for renal conditions. And uh, one is for diabetic retinopathy and the other one's for CKD. And almost all the time they'll test you on CKD and that's a 2-2. So um, think, of your, think of it this way. I got two kidneys, one, two. So I'm gonna list two twice. We, do you guys remember Sesame Street? So E11.22. Now, CKD3 used to be N18.30, but then they gave us more options, the A and B. And since this says A, it can't not be 0 0.30 anymore. So again, it's got to be uh, for A or B, it's going to be a 1 or a 2. And it just so happens to be an A is a 1 and a 2 is a B. Then we look at our CHF code, I50, very common. If we didn't know what type of CHF the patient had, it would be I50.9, but we're told it's chronic systolic and just happens to be a two. Um, so it's 0.22. Now, 0 0.42 is systolic on diastolic or diastolic on systolic. I just have to know that's both of them. Then our hypertension code. Because we have hypertension in CKD we and CHF, it changes the hypertension code. So I10 is out. We actually have three processes. We have CKD, hypertension, CHF. So it's a three. So I10 and I12 out the door. If they just had CKD, two things. So it'd be I12. And then we have our insulin. That's how my brain works, guys. But we ruled it out on the last code and the first code. And that wasn't intimidating at, at all, was it? You were able to rule those out quickly, immediately, because you became fluent in the code set. Now, don't expect this to happen right away if you're a student. This, uh, you know, takes time. This reminds me of my mother te teaching painting classes. And they would sit down and she would paint these beautiful roses with like toll paint. Uh, you know, acrylic learning classes and the students would get so frustrated. I could hear them when I was growing up saying, how come I can't make my flowers look like yours? And she would say, because you've painted five so far and I've painted over a hundred thousand. That could be, that could be it. So, you know, I have a, over a decade of working with the code sets and the way they work. And some of you guys are just starting, but it'll come the more you hear these little tips and tricks, right? And how you understand the disease process. And you get to write all over your, if you're taking the AAPC manual uh, uh, test, you get to write on your manual and make yourself little notes. Um, so you can help yourself that way. Now, if you have a topic that you would like us to do a webinar like this, break it out, uh, maybe discuss it, or uh, maybe you're struggling as a student with a particular area, uh, then let us know and we'll we'll create some education surrounding it. It's real easy to submit your request. It's cco.us forward slash topic hyphen request. If this was beneficial to you, you know, you guys, we don't really advertise. So as a thank you to us, it might be kind of nice if you let other people know that we have this YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. We are also on LinkedIn. You can share, you know, um, our site on LinkedIn. And uh, again, we have fun doing this. We want to give back, but we don't know what you need unless you tell us. So give us a topic request. And that's it, guys. If you are learning and you want to have fun when you learn, reach out to us at cco.us and kind of let our enjoyment of the code set rub off on you. All right. Thanks, guys. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.